Welcome to the Maths Made Easy tutorial on direct and inverse proportionality. We'll look specifically at proportionality graphs in this video. So first of all, let's start with an easy example. If we have y is directly proportional to x, then we can write this as y equals kx. And now if you've seen the second video on this topic, you'll have seen this before. So if you're familiar with your straight line equations, you'll recognize this as the form y equals mx plus c. So m is just k and c is zero. Uh, so therefore this is a straight line through the origin so it should look something like that so moving on then uh, what if we have a more complicated example uh, so still direct proportionality but this time y is proportional to x squared uh, so we can write this as y equals kx squared uh, now on a graph this is not going to be a straight line anymore uh, because as you increase the value of x uh, the value of y is going to increase much faster and that's because y is proportional to x squared so you square the value of x so y increases much faster so you end up with an upwards shaped curve like so. So let's now consider some inverse proportionality relationships. So for example y is inversely proportional to x cubed or y is proportional to 1 over x cubed. You can write this as y equals k over x cubed if you like. Uh, but let's consider the graph. So it might not be immediately obvious what this graph would look like. So a useful way uh, to work it out if you have to do that is uh, to consider the values between zero and one separately and then consider the values beyond one. Uh, so uh, between zero and one, uh, so that's like 0 0.5, 0 0.75, etc. Uh, as you uh, square these values or cube these values, they become increasingly smaller. Uh, so if you divide one by a very small number, you end up with a very large number. So as you get closer to zero on the x-axis, y gets much larger. Uh, and then if you go beyond one now, uh, what happens when you cube a value that's greater than one? Well, it becomes greater and greater. So if you do one divided by a big number, uh, you get a very small number. So you end up with a graph that's shaped like this with a turning point that occurs roughly at x equals one. Okay, and then if we move on then, let's have a look at a final example of y is inversely proportional to the square root of x, or if you prefer, y equals k over root x. So let's break this relationship down in the same way as we did before. Uh, so if you have a x value that's less than 1, so between 0 and 1 that is, uh, the square root of that value is still going to be less than 1. So 1 divided by the square root of a number less than 1 is going to be large. Uh, and then as you get beyond 1, uh, once you, uh, if you square root that value, uh, you're going to end up with a number that's greater than 1. Uh, so uh, again, this graph is going to taper off like so. Uh, the, probably the rate at which it tapers off won't be as much or as steep as the, the graph before, uh, but it's still going to have roughly the same shape. So you may or may not be asked to draw a proportionality graph, uh, but it's just a useful tool and it helps give sort of a visual way of thinking about a proportionality relationship. Uh, so it's a useful skill to have in your locker. So if you want to get some practice with some harder direct and inverse proportion questions, then why not have a go at our online exam? Uh, it's available through our revision platform and if you take the test you'll find loads of different questions to have a go at and you get instant feedback on each and every one. So this will allow you to keep track of the areas that you're weakest at and show you where you can improve. So if you're interested then click the link below, it will take you straight there.